Hello, I'm Helen Fox, a librarian for Inspire. In this video, I'm going to share with you some of the resources available in Nottinghamshire Libraries for family history. As a case study, we'll explore the family history story of Sophia Amelia Marks and Maurice Burton, pictured here on the wedding day in Worksop in 1909. The bride, Sophia Amelia, nicknamed Sissy, was born in Worksop in around 1887. She was the daughter of Jewish immigrants who had moved to the town in around 1880. The groom was also a Jewish immigrant to the UK. He was born in Lithuanian Russia and his birth name was Mesh David Asinski. By the time of his marriage to Sophia, he was working as a tailor in Sheffield and went by the name of Maurice Burton. In years to come, he would become more widely known as Sir Montague Burton, founder of the Tailoring Empire. Practically everybody has heard of Burton's. It was at one time one of the biggest clothing chains in Europe. But what can we find out about the man behind the company and his, fi and his family connections to Worksop? To help us learn more about the Marx family, we'll be exploring some of the physical records available at Worksop Library. As one of Nottinghamshire's bigger libraries, it has a large local heritage collection with lots of information about local places and people. For family history, we have things like census records, electoral registers, parish registers, trade directories, local newspapers and photographs. We'll also need to look at online records, particularly to find out about the lives of Montague Burton and wife Sophia outside Worksop. Inspire has an online subscription to Ancestry Library Edition, which has family history records from all across the world. This can be accessed for free in Nottinghamshire Libraries and Nottinghamshire Archives. The same thing applies to the British Newspaper Archive, which is a searchable digitised archive of historical newspapers from all over the UK. Our story begins with the Marx family living in Worksop a few years before the birth of Sophia Amelia. We first find them recorded in Worksop on the 1881 census. Censuses were taken every 10 years and show us information about each member of the household. Here we can find them living at 100 Potter Street and we can see that Morris and Fanny Marx were born in Poland, which was then part of the Russian Empire. Morris is described as a general dealer and there's a son called Abraham, age six, who was born in Sheffield and the family were actually living in Sheffield before they came to Worksop. On the next census page, we can see other children, Tilly Marks and Solomon Marks, also born in Sheffield. And there's a cousin also in the household called Israel Gutman, who's working as a window glazier and he's from Poland as well. On the 1891 census, Morris Marx is described as a naturalised British subject and his certificate of naturalisation dated 1886 can be viewed on Ancestry Library edition. The family are now living at 122 Potter Street and we can see that Morris is described as a furniture broker, Abraham his assistant, Solomon just 12 is a watchmaker's apprentice and by now there are six more children, Judah, Joseph, Moses, Sophia Amelia, Eva, and baby Samuel. And there's a general servant called Elizabeth Stevens, also in the household. On the 1901 census, the Marx family is still living at 122 Potter Street, but the three eldest children have left home. The next three boys are working, um, we can see Judah is a traveller selling furniture. Joseph is an apprentice to a chemist. And Moses is a traveller in drapery. And the three youngest children, Sophia, Amelia, Eva and Samuel, are also on this census. Samuel's on the next page. The more detailed 1911 census tells us that Moritz and Fanny have been married for 42 years. We also find out that they've had 
14 children in total and of this 14, six have died. Um, also in the household, a grown up daughter, Eva, who was a school teacher and son Samuel, age 20, who was assisting with the business. And it's worth noting about this 1911 census. It's available on Ancestry Library Edition, like the others, but unlike the previous censuses we've looked at, we don't have it on microfiche in the libraries. The next census we could look at is the 1921 census, which has only just been released. And at the moment, um, at the beginning of 2022, we can't view this on Ancestry. It's only currently possible to view it on a pay to view basis on the Find My Past website. Or if you want to view it for free, you can go to the National Archives in Kew or the Central Library in Manchester. The census was taken in June 1921 and we'd expect it to show Morris and Fanny still at their Potter Street residence and by this time they'd be in their 70s. Even though we don't currently have the free access to the 1921 census, we do have other records in the library to help us fill in more detail about the lives of the Marks family. Maurice Marks had a trade and is therefore listed in many Nottinghamshire trade directories, which were available in the libraries and online. Um, in the Kelly's directory of Nottinghamshire for 1916, we can find him here, Maurice Marks and Son Furniture deal Dealers at 122 Potter Street. The family home on Potter Street can be found on this Ordnance Survey Map of Worksop, which was published in 1898. And we can also see landmarks, buildings and streets in the area, things that are still there today, obviously, Worksop Priory and Gatehouse, very nearby, and then things which have long gone, such as this area of housing called Mare Croft. And these historical maps uh, available in the library at Nottinghamshire Archives and also on websites such as the National Library of Scotland's mapping website. The library also has lots of local photographs which have been digitised in many cases to go on the Inspire Picture Archive. Here on the left, we can see a photograph of how 122 Potter Street looks today. And I didn't manage to find an old photograph of the property, but we have several photographs of this area of town. Here we can see the top end of Potter Street with the French Harm pub on the right um, and up on the left, the town hall. The town hall here later on in the 60s. And here in the early 1900s, Frederick Hewitt's butcher's shop on the corner of Abbey Street, which was really near to the Marx's property. The library also has lots of local history books to help you find out more about Worksop in Victorian times and into the 20th century when the Marx family were living there. We can also find out about individual members of the Marx family from local newspapers. Worksop Library has the local newspaper, the Worksop Guardian, going back to 1896 on microfilm. And in this issue from 1909, we find an article relating to Morris and Fanny's son, Moses Marks, who was in the British Army. He wrote home to his parents about his training in Egypt and the letter was published in the local paper. Newspapers can generally be an excellent source of family history information and military history information. Often during the war years, we find reports relating to local soldiers who served. Moses Marks went on to serve as a sergeant in the First World War. And here in 1914, there's a report in the Retford Times about him being recommended for the Victoria Cross. There are also records relating to Moses Mark's time in the First World War on Ancestry Library Edition. This is his medal rolls index card and we can see it includes his regiment, the Coldstream Guards, his rank, sergeant, regimental numbers, um, the medals to which he was entitled, the Victory British and Star Medal, his date of disembarkation in 
1914 and his date of discharge in 1916. And there are lots of abbreviations on here. We can see SWB standing for Silver War Badge. And these were worn at home by soldiers who had been discharged early due to wounds or illness. And in Moses' case, he was discharged in August uh, 1916 due to a gunshot wound. The following decade in 1921, Maurice Marks died at home following a long illness. And there's a detailed obituary for him in the Workshop Guardian, which tells us how well known and how well respected he was in the town. It goes into his background in Poland, where he fled from Russian oppression and it says arrived in England almost penniless. It tells us how he settled in Worksop and became head of the local Jewish community and services were conducted at his home and he always closed his shop on a Saturday, the Jewish Sabbath. We learn quite a lot about his character from the obituary. It tells us that he was involved with lots of charitable activities and he had a kindly, generous disposition um, and he was also a keen Freemason. Morris's death was a blow to his wife, Fanny, who was, herself was in failing health, and she died just a couple of months later. The report in the Workshop Guardian gives details of her burial at Eckersfield Cemetery in Sheffield, where Morris was also laid to rest. And the list of mourners in the funeral report gives us useful information about the family and friends from the local Jewish community. And obviously, um, Morris and Fanny's grown up children were present at the funeral and we can see them listed here. Mr and Mrs Montague Burton, son-in-law and daughter. With Morris and Fanny's death, the Marx family's time in Worksop had come to an end. The 1923 Electoral Register, which we have at Worksop Library, shows us that there are new residents at 122 Potter Street, Bernard and Jenny Boyers. Actually, Samuel, the Marx's youngest son, who was assisting with the business, had sadly died in his late 20s and other Marx children had moved away from Worksop. We move now to look at the next part of the story, which focuses on Morris and Fanny's second daughter, Sophia Amelia, and her husband, Morris Burton. As we saw at the beginning, back in 1909, Sophia Amelia had married Mr. Morris Burton at Worksop Town Hall. And this article from the Worksop Guardian describes an impressive and picturesque Jewish ceremony. And this would have been a very unusual occasion at the time in Worksop. It goes on to include a list of guests who, were who attended the Town Hall reception, um, which included local Jewish families. The bridesmaids pictured were Sophia's younger sister, Eva, and Fanny Nicholson. So what can we find out about Sophia's new husband, Morris Marx, uh, Morris Burton, later to become Sir Montague Burton? Because of his great success and achievements, we can find a lot of information about him online, including a detailed Wikipedia entry. He's included in the Dictionary of National Biography, and there's a biography for him by Eric Sigsworth, which was published in, in the 1990s, called Montague Burton, Taylor of Case. Archives relating to the Burton family and company have been deposited at West Yorkshire Archive Service. And this is a photograph from the, from the archives showing him as a young man before his marriage to Sophia. His birth name was Mesh David Isinski, and he came from Kirkel in the Kovno province of Russia, which is now part of Lithuania. Like Sophia Amelia's father, a new husband was also naturalised to become a British subject. And this is his certificate of naturalisation in 1910. And this is available on Ancestry Library Edition. 
in 1900 measured migrated to the UK he was just 15 um, and this was to escape persecution from the Russian pogroms he adopted the name of Maurice Burton which is shown here on his naturalization certificate he started out in Chesterfield as a door-to-door -door peddler with very little to his name, he worked hard to earn a living and to improve his English. And in 1904, he took out an insurance policy on the contents of a Chesterfield shop and set up business here as an outfitter selling ready-made suit. He later opened shops in Mansfield in 1908 and in Sheffield in 1909. And we can find him here on the 1911 census with wife Sissy, Sophia Amelia. Um, he's listed as a uh, tailor, dealer, and we can see that they're living at 26 Violet Bank Road in Sheffield. They've got one daughter who's just one, Barbara, and also there's a visitor in the household, Moses Marks, sergeant in the Coldstream Guard. So this is Sophia's brother who we learned about earlier. After living in Sheffield and then Leeds, in 1918, the Burton family moved to Harrogate, which is where we'd expect to find them on the 1921 census. And by this time, Morris is more widely known as Montague, and he and wife Sophia have had four children, Barbara, Stanley, Arnold and Raymond, the twins, and they're pictured here. The Burton's clothing empire really grew during the First World War and the number of stores and the size of the workforce increased rapidly. And it also became a major manufacturer of uniforms for the British Armed Forces. Expansion into manufacturing continued after the war and Burton's Hudson Road factory in Leeds opened in 1921. And as shown on the blue plaque here, this became the largest clothing factory in the world. Burton factories became a model of welfare provision and Montague Burton was considered to be an enlightened employer. He was concerned with providing the workers with decent wages and good working conditions. By the time Burton's was listed on the London Stock Exchange in 1929, it had 400 stores, factories and mills. Later in the Second World War, it again turned to uniform production and it was also one of the main suppliers of the demobilisation clothing after the war ended. And by this time, Burton's were clothing around a fifth of British men. Burton's was known as the tailor of taste and promoted itself as offering good quality made to measure suits at affordable prices. Montague Burton himself said that good clothes develop a man's self-respect. Its high street stores were designed to be modern temples of commerce. They were usually in prominent sites. They were striking in appearance and instantly recognisable as Burton's. The purpose-built stores often had foundation date stones placed by members of Montague's family, including Sophia and the four children. And here's Burton's store in Worksop, which occupied a corner plot on Bridge Street. And this has long been known locally as Burton's Corner. We can see here that this photograph was taken in 1980. Worksop store was in fact not purpose built. The arcade building where Burton's was located was built in the early 1900s. In the 1920s up to the early 1930s, this corner plot of the arcade was occupied by Rolls the Drapers and Burton's was actually on the opposite side of Bridge Street um, at number nine to 11. In 1932, Burton's and Rolls exchanged properties and the arcade premises were redesigned and refitted to reflect Burton's corporate style and the new Burton's store opened on the 27th of October 1933 and it's recorded here in the Workshop Guardian. Meanwhile Montague Burton and Sophia continue to live in Harrogate 
No censuses exist for 1931 or 1941, but we can find them on something called the 1939 register. This is a bit similar to the census, but it was actually a national survey um, of the civilian population, which was taken at the beginning of the Second World War. The register shows the family in Harrogate at number 64 Kent Road, and we can see here Montague and Sophia. And unlike the census, the 1939 register actually gives dates of birth as well. We can find daughter Barbara, who at this time was married to somebody called Berens. So it's Barbara Berens. And then we can see that the surname Carmel has been written in later on. And Barbara actually remarried somebody called Carmel later. And this has been added in. And this is because the register continued to be updated long after the Second World War. We can also find the twins, Raymond um, up here and Arnold, and they were born in 1917. And also several members of, of staff in the household as well. We've got a, a secretary here and we can see the, some of the lines are blacked out where the record is still closed. And on the 1939 register, an individual's record should only be open 100 years after their birth or if they're known to have died, then it can be opened as well. The Burtons travelled all over the world and we can find records of some of their trips and cruises on Ancestry Library Edition. So Montague, wife Sophia and daughter Barbara are recorded on a passenger list in 1930 on the Aquitania ship. And we can see the digitized image of this passenger list on Ancestry Library Edition. What we've got here is just a sim summary of the main information on that passenger list. And passenger lists can give us quite a lot of useful detail about the passengers, um, even things like physical appearance. So we can see that Sir Montague was just five foot four and actually Sophia was five foot ten. We can also see that a brother, Bernard Burton, is listed as the contact, the family contact back home in England. And Bernard was Montague's half-brother who'd also adopted the name Burton. He was um, a lifelong business associate and one of the directors of the company as well. Montague also wrote travel diaries which were privately published in a book called Globe Girdling. And one of the holidays he writes about is a cruise on the Empress of Britain. He and Sophia celebrated the 25th 25th wedding anniversary on this cruise and Montague remembers back to his wedding in workshop and he talks about the great difference between the interior of the town tiny town hall in the marketplace workshop which he said had probably never been decorated since it left the hands of the builder half a century before and the dining room of the world's luxury liner. Back in the UK, Sir Montague rented a large property in Kingston Hill, Surrey, to be near London. And after it was bombed during the Second World War, he later bought a property called Charters at Sunning Hill in Berkshire. When Sir Montague died suddenly in 1952, he was actually in Leeds um, at a private dinner party at the Great Northern Hotel. And he was there celebrating the Jewish New Year and the founding of the firm of Burton. His death was mourned all across the country and we can see here huge crowds gathered to see his funeral hearse entering Chapel Town Road in Leeds. Obituaries and tributes can be found in newspapers from all over the country and these can be accessed for free in our libraries on the British Newspaper Archive. Here are some tributes from people who knew him well, and these were published in the Bradford Observer newspaper. We've got a tribute here from the, the mayor of Leeds, who talks about Sir Montague's concern for the improvement of social and cultural activities for the masses. And then 
a tribute here from a professor of industrial relations at Leeds University who says, I had known Sir Montague for more than 20 years and he was a man of outstanding industrial ability with great powers of organisation and administration. He built up his nationwide clothing business from the smallest beginnings and had the inspiration to combine manufacturing with retailing. So it's clear that Montague Burton was widely admired for what he'd achieved in his lifetime. And at the time of his death, Burton's was the largest multiple tailor in the world with 616 stores. But he'd achieved a lot more than just great material wealth. In the 1920s, he'd been appointed Justice of the Peace, a post which he kept for many years. And in 1931, he was knighted for furthering industrial relations and international peace. He endowed chairs in industrial relations at many different universities. And in later life, he was awarded an honorary doctorate from the University of Leeds. He supported many charities, both Jewish and non-Jewish. And along with wife Sophia, he was a founding member of the Orthodox Jewish community in Harrogate. Lady Sophia died just five years after Sir Montague and she was living in London at the time of her death. She was buried alongside Montague at Gildersum United Hebrew Congregation Cemetery in Leeds. Several years later though, the two of them were reinterred at Stonefall Cemetery in Harrogate when he was alive, Sir Montague had made efforts to secure land in Harrogate for a Jewish cemetery, but that had never been achieved in his lifetime. When Harrogate finally did get its first Jewish cemetery in 1964, the Burton couple were its first burials. There are entries for both Sir Montague and Lady Sophia in the England and Wales National Probate Calendar, which is like an index to wills and probate records, and this is available on Ancestry Library Edition. Following the death of Lady Sophia, probate went to her three sons, who were directors of the company, and daughter, Barbara Jessie Carmel. The, the Burton brothers remained central to the company following their father's death. Raymond Burton, for example, chaired women's fashion chain, Peter Robinson, which had been acquired by Burton's back in 1946. And he, he later set up the first top shop um, in Peter Robinson's Oxford Circus store. Montague's sons supported the firm's merger with Jackson the Taylor in 1954, and its owner, Lionel Jacobson, became Burton's new managing director and chairman. The company went on to survive tougher economic times of the 1950s and continued to enjoy a high profile. And during the 70s and 80s, the Burton Group continued to concentrate on women's wear and acquired Dorothy Perkins, Evans and Principles. And in the late 1990s, the Burton Group became the Arcadia Group, and this was acquired by Philip Green in 2002. As we know, in late 2020, Arcadia went into administration, but the Burton brand lives on. In February 2021, it was acquired by Boohoo, the online retailer. So what about the Burton children? Between them, they gave Montague and Sophia many grandchildren who went on to have children and grandchildren of their own. Barbara, Stanley, Raymond and Arnold all, all lived longer lives than the parents. And in fact, the twins, Raymond and Arnold, lived well into the 90s. We can find information about the births, marriages and deaths on Ancestry, which has civil registration, birth, marriage and death indexes for England and Wales. There's also biographical information online about Stanley, Raymond and Arnold who continued in the father's footsteps in their charitable work and philanthropy. It was Stanley Burton who made the first deposit of Burton Company records many years ago at West Yorkshire Archives Service. And there's lots at the archives to help us find out more about the Burton family and business. More detailed information can also be, also be found in the sources listed here. 
A final thank you to my colleague Jenny Johnson, who brought this fascinating family history story to my attention um, when she gave a talk a few years ago about them at Worksop Library. If you are interested in researching your own family history, please do have a look at the heritage pages of the Inspire website. There's a beginner's guide to doing your family history in Nottinghamshire, the great ancestor hunt. And there's also information about what we have in each of our bigger libraries to help with local and family history. You can also find the links giving you the free access to Ancestry Library Edition and the British Newspaper Archive when you're using them in Nottinghamshire Libraries and Archives.